You guys wanted me to reveal who is under the mask of the gumball, and we're gonna do that. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is probably one of the characters I really didn't want to do right away, but you guys voted for it. Look, we only have one episode of Clues, so the two choices I gave you was Cleopatra and Gumball, and you guys picked the harder one. So, uh, let's go through the clues to pitch correct audio and then answer those clues. Starting off with episode two, which once again, the only clues we have. He said he wanted to be on stage, but didn't know how to make it. So he did anything and everything to get an audience. This included beatboxing on the street, performing at theme parks, and even got booed off the stage during a competition for winning, which is kind of interesting. He watched everyone else succeed, but refused to quit because, quote, no one was going to burst his bubble. We saw visual clues, a sign for the American South with a big heart on it, it was a big map, a drum set and a guitar, a giant black spider on a red and white mushroom, and a horse-drawn carriage inside of a bubble. Then he said, keep in mind that this night was Wizard of Oz night, he says, deep down, at the end of the day, Tin Man has always had the heart of a superhero, and I might actually too. Those are all the clues. I mean, literally. It's only been like a minute into the video, and those are all the clues that we have for this character, making this character probably one of the hardest to reveal. And I asked you guys last Wednesday for the Masked Singer pre-show livestream, 7.30 p.m. before we show, and you guys really want me to do him. I sat down for quite some time, and, um, there's a decent amount of stuff pointing it to who we think it is, but let's go ahead and go through the Pitch Correct audio. If you don't know, every week we get these clue packages for The Masked Singer, and in them, it's the real celebrity speaking, but Fox is smart. They're not going to let you hear the real voice because then you'll know who it is. So they take the audio, they speed it up, they pitch it up, they pitch it down, that way you have no idea who it is. It kind of sounds like an alien. But I'm an executive audio producer in New York City where it's my job to make audio sound good except for in my own room because there's a lot of echoes in here. And so I figured we could slow it down and pitch correct it. That way you could hear the real celebrity voice. And so I'm going to do just that. I'm going to give you the original audio they gave us and then I'll give you my audio. Take a listen. Just like the Tin Man, my heart took quite a beating. Just like the Tin Man, my heart took quite a beating. Because my yellow brick road to success came with zero directions. I knew I wanted to end up on the stage, but didn't know how to make that happen. So I did anything and everything to get an audience. I beatboxed on the street. I performed at theme parks and even got booed off the stage at a competition for winning. It felt like nothing seemed to stick. I watched everyone else around me succeed time and time again. But I refused to quit because no one was going to burst my bubble. And like a lot of us in Hollywood, I needed a little timing and <laughs> a lot of luck. But look, I'm proof that even if your road isn't paved with gold, as long as your heart is, you'll find your way. So who do you think that is? Do you think it's Scott Porter as well? Because that's who I think it is. And so let's go ahead and compare the pitch correct audio. First, we'll listen to the gumball speak, then we'll compare Scott speaking, and then we'll try to find a decent amount singing clip of him, but there's not too many online. So uh, here, take a listen. Just like the Tin Man, my heart took quite a beating. I wanted to do because I quit school to become a professional beatboxer. This is my heartbeat song and I'm gonna play it. Lord, I was born a rambling man. So yeah, I would say that sounds like him. It's a little bit off, but I think the clues definitely add up to be hip. He talked about how he wanted to be on stage and was willing to do whatever it takes to get an audience. And then he was beatboxing, performing for theme parks, he got booed off stages. And to me, that is the bulk of the clues that kind of add up to this being him. He did a lot of different stuff. First, he was a beatboxer. He tried doing that and then kind of got like involved in some kind of local show at the University of Central Florida. It was an acapella group, so he started doing a little bit of that. And if you know anything about Central Florida, and if you want to be a musician or an actor, you usually go to the theme parks. And so he did. 
He went to Universal Studios and performed there. What? I have absolutely no idea. Now, he did get part of some group that went on a kind of like a competition show called Star Search, which is funny enough, it was actually a show I was supposed to do when I was like six years old and I didn't wind up doing it. I should have. That would have been a lot of fun. And they won the competition, but the audience was angry by that. They wanted to vote in a different group, and so they got booed off. Those clues add up there. Now, he did go and do some kind of Broadway. There was a show that he was on, I think it was called like Alter Boy or something like that, Alter Boys. And he did do that. I'm surprised we don't have any clues for that in this package, because I feel like there would be like a dead giveaway. Then we saw the sign, it actually was a map of the American South with a big heart on it. That refers to the Heart of Dixie, the TV show he was on. I actually enjoyed watching that. Him and Rachel really did a great job. We saw the drum set with a guitar. He was in the 2009 movie Band Slam, which, believe it or not, our goldfish was on as well. And um, I already revealed the goldfish. So if you want to go ahead and check out that video, I think it's like two videos ago, because I think we just did it on Monday. Then we saw the black spider with red and white mushrooms. This plays kind of with, he does a lot of like video games and anime kind of voiceover stuff. And he was in one of the Spider-Man ones. So I'm assuming that could mean Spider-Man. It could be, who really knows? We saw a horse-drawn carriage inside of a bubble. This could refer to either, I think it's Ginny and Georgia, the show he's on from the South. Cause I kind of feel like that gives like small town vibes. And that's what I think. Some people say it's for part of one of those other video games he's on. Then the last clue was he, we saw the heart clock and it says deep down at the end of the day, Tin Man always had a heart of a superhero and it might actually too. Now this guy, while he did like, you know, Friday Night Lights, he's done Broadway, he's done all these things once again because he's tried everything to become famous and he, I mean, he's done that now. He's really well known in the voiceover world for voicing over games like video games and anime TV or animation television. And for the most part, it's like Marvel stuff. Like, I think he just did one in 20, actually this this year, it was Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. So yeah, he's done a lot of voiceover work. I don't think he's actually technically been a superhero, but he's been doing a lot of the things with superheroes. So for me, those clues kind of add up. But let me know what you guys think. I mean, really and truly, those are all the clues we have for this character. I know there really isn't much to kind of base our guess off of, but that's just kind of based off of this. The one thing I do want to add in here, when we're watching this episode upcoming on Wednesday, I want to see if they say anything about NSYNC, the boy band, even though this week coming up is girl band week or girl group week. The reason why is because his band that did win Star Search they went on to open for NSYNC. So, you know, are we going to get some kind of hints of past characters and maybe another boy band reference? If we do, that's only going to help our guess on who we think this is. And I think that we should get clues for Friday Night Lights. Like, I'm assuming we're going to get at least one football clue, am I right? To me, that's definitely going to point him in that direction. Maybe he's even going to mention something about, like, and I uh, was on a show with the goldfish. Uh huh? Uh huh? You just never know. Anyway, let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments section below. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. I'm Joey. I'll see you later. Bye.